بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I welcome you to another episode of our series السفرة الكرام the series dealing with تجويد the art of reciting the Quran in order to start off our lecture for today we always give an interesting fact about the Quran and we were discussing the history of the compilation of the Quran and we mentioned that Abu Bakr radiallahu an within two and a half years of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa death he had compiled the first Mus'haf the first Quran from Surah Fatiha to Surah Al-Nas in one book however this Mus'haf, this Quran was not binding upon the entire Muslim Ummah therefore any person could write the Quran if he wish from his own uh, knowledge from his own memorization of the Quran and so what occurred was that one year uh, in one of the battles uh, in Azerbaijan some of the Muslims from Iraq differed with the Muslims from Syria in the recitation of the Quran and one of the companions was alarmed at these differences so he rushed to back to Medina his name was Hudayf ibn al-Yaman and he entered it upon the Khalifa of that time who was Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu and he said O oh Khalifa please do something about this before the Muslims differ about their book like the Jews and Christians did before so Uthman radiallahu anhu compiled a committee, compiled a, uh, if you like, a, a delegation of the, of the Sahaba, of the companions of his time. And he asked them what should be done. And they said that, in their opinion, this Quran, the Quran of Abu Bakr, should be made standard to all the Muslims. In other words, if anybody wished to write the Quran, he would have to go back to this Quran and copy it from it directly. So Uthman radiallahu anhu then formed another committee of four companions. And this committee was headed once again by the same companion who wrote the Quran the first time and he was Zayd, Zayd, Zayd ibn Thabit. And this committee then produced a number of Qurans, five, six, seven, eight Qurans. And they sent one Quran to every single province of the Muslim Ummah. To Basra, to Kufa, to all of the other different cities. To Mecca, there was one in Medina. And they sent this one major Quran along with a Hafiz, a Qari with it. And now, if anybody wished to get a copy of the Qur'an, he would have to go and copy it directly from that copy. So there would be a standard copy based upon the copy of Abu Bakr. The copy of Abu Bakr was the basis. When this new committee came, it only sat down and rewrote the copy of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. And so this became the standard copy of the Qur'an. Therefore, to this day, no two Qur'ans are different. And some of these Uthmanic Qur'ans, it is reputed that they are still existent until our time. There is one that is supposed to be in Tashkent in the Republic of uh, Russia. The very Qur'an that Uthman radiallahu anhu ordered to be written. Now, here is a point that we need to mention, and that is that the issue arose how to get rid of all of the other Qur'ans that had been written before the Qur'an of Uthman. Because this is a holy book, you cannot just throw it in the trash, astaghfirullah, this is kufr. How do you dispose of it? Uthman radiallahu anhu decided that the most best way to dispose of it would be to burn them. So that nobody could do anything evil with them or throw them away or do something. You have to get rid of it in a clean way. So here we have a lot of non-Muslims when they hear that Uthman burnt the Qur'an, they, they put it in an evil light, that it was something sacrilegious that he did. That he tried to get rid of these evil copies of the Qur'an or these you know, irreverent copies. No, this is not the case. The exact opposite is true. Because he wished to respect the Qur'an, the only way to get rid of it was to destroy it naturally, like in a fire. Because the Qur'an is a book, you cannot just throw it in the trash, a'udhu billah. The scholars state that if the Qur'an has become unusable, it's too old, you must somehow get rid of the writing. Either throw it in the ocean so that the water takes the ink out, or you burn it, or do something of this nature. So this is what Uthman did, that all of the other Qur'ans were disposed of in a religious or in a, a way that would not be sacrilegious. And so they were burnt, and therefore anyone who wished to get a copy of the Qur'an, he would have to go directly to the source itself and obtain a copy of the Qur'an. And it is because of this that as we said, until our time, no two copies of the Qur'an are different, letter for letter, word for word, haraka for haraka, they are all the same. Getting back to our lesson of Tajweed, last time we had discussed the rules of Nun, Sakina and Tanween. And we went into a, quite a lot of detail, we went around four or five episodes discussing the rules of the silent Noon and the Tanween. We now move on to the next topic and that is the rules of the silent meme. Okay, because the, the silent meme also has a number of rules pertaining to it. Now, the rules of the meme are much, much easier, so don't get scared. The rules of Noon Sakina are a bit more lengthier. The meme, it also has the rules of Idgham, Ikhfa, and Idhar. 
Okay, we've studied all of these rules with the Nun Sakina. They also apply to the Meme. The only rule that doesn't apply is that of the Iqlab. There is no Iqlab when it comes to the Meme. Okay, so these three rules apply to the Meme as well. Now, how do you differentiate between the Idgham of the Meme, for example, and the Idgham of the Nun Sakina? Well, what the scholars did was, because the Meme comes from the lips, remember the Meme is from the lips, they said anything to do with the Meme, we'll call it the Lip Idgham. Or in Arabic, Idgham Shafawi. Okay, Idhar Shafawi. Okay, Ikhfa Shafawi. The only point is they want to differentiate between the Nun Sakina and the Meme Sakina, so they added the Shafawi word in order that you know that this is the ruling of the Meme. So the first ruling of the Meme is Idgham Shafawi or the merging of the Lips. Meme. And because it is a Meme, we don't just stop at Idgham, we say Idgham Shafawi. When does this occur? It occurs when the Meme is followed by another Meme. So when you have a silent meme, once again, all of these rules occur to the silent letters. When you have a silent meme and it's followed by another meme, then you merge them together and you do this with uh, a ghunna. You merge the first meme with the second meme and do a ghunna on it. Let us look at some examples. We have am madha. Am with a sukun on the meme and then madha. Okay, how do you pronounce this? Am madha. You have a ghunna on the meme and you will make the merging or the idgham and there will, uh, in the Quran it will be written with a shadda so you will even know that there will be a merging here. Okay. Another example we have Lakum ma kasabatum Lakum ma kasabatum We have the meme second followed by another meme here Lakum ma kasabatum Here is where the idgham shafawi occurs. And a final example, أَرَأَيْتُمْ مَا Once again we have the meme second, followed by another meme, أَرَأَيْتُمْ مَا You have once again the meme second, followed by a meme, you merge it together and you have a ghunna. So very easy rule, pretty straightforward, and you can rephrase this by saying anytime you see a meme with a shadda on it, you do a ghunna. You can rephrase it that way, it's very easy. Anytime you see a meme with a shadda on it, this is the sign for you that there is an idgham of the meme, which is idgham shafawi, and therefore you need to do a ghunna here. So this is the first rule, idgham shafawi. The second rule is ikhfa shafawi, or suppressing the meme sound, but because it's a meme, we add the word shafawi, we don't just say ikhfa, ikhfa shafawi. Okay? Now, when does this occur? It occurs when the meme is followed by a ba. And once again, you must perform a ghunna. Okay, so when the meme is followed by a ba, you perform a ghunna, and that is called ikhfa shafawi. Let us see an example here. Hum barizun. We have the meme second followed by a ba. Hum barizun. You have a meme followed by a ba, you make the ikhfa, and you have a ghunna. Hum barizun. Another example, let's see. Lakum. Bihi. We have a meme second followed by a ba. Lakum bih. Lakum bih. We have a meme second followed by a ba. One second, we're going to have an ikhfa and there will be a ghunna. How long is the ghunna, who remembers? Two, Two harakas, or if you like, half a second. Uh, it's a very short uh, uh, time, but make sure that it does prolong to that time. If you go it less than that, you will not have a proper ghunna. Uh, we have one more example, a bit longer here. Uh, فَلَمَّا أَنْبَأَهُمْ بِأَسْمَائِهِمْ How do we recite this? We say فَلَمَّا أَنْبَأَهُمْ بِأَسْمَائِهِمْ Okay, notice here now, we have a meme with a shadda on it. Okay, a meme with a shadda always has a ghunna. Any time it occurs in the Qur'an, no exceptions at all. A meme with a shadda is a sign you have to do a ghunna. Okay? Here we have a noon followed by a ba. What rule is this? Iqlab. I purposely chose this example because many people get confused between an iqlab and an ikhfa shafawi. Because the letters are a bit similar. When a noon sakina is followed by a ba, what do you do? We convert, we convert the noon to a, to, meme. To a meme. meme. This is iqlab. It has nothing to do with ikhfa shafawi. Because it's the same letter, uh, people get confused. It's the ba. Okay, the letter for iqlab for the noon sakina is ba. ba. And the letter for ikhfa shafawi for the meme is ba. ba. So people get confused. They're two separate rules. 
You just have to look at it, whether it's noon second or meme second. If it's noon second, then it will be what? Meme. Meme. And if it's meme second, then you will do the ikhfa shafawi. Okay? So, فَلَمَّا أَنْبَأَهُمْ بِأَسْمَائِهِمْ Here is where the ikhfa shafawi occurs with the meme second followed by a aba. So this is the second of the Three rules, we said that there's one more rule that occurs with the meme, and that is with idhar or the clarity. Now what letters are remaining? All of the other letters, the 26 letters of the Arabic alphabet remaining. All of the remaining letters, there is no special rule. No idgham, no shadda, no ikhfa, no ghunna. You just pronounce the meme and move on. Okay, so that's what is called idhar. Uh, for example, we have... Uh, عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ I didn't put a ghunna, I didn't do anything. I didn't say عَنْهُمْ No, nothing. Also you have to be careful that the meme is heard because especially with some letters like wow and also with fa, it's very easy to lose the sound of the meme. You have to be very careful that you pronounce the meme crisp and clear as I said. عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ Likewise we have لَهُمْ أَعْيُنْ لَهُمْ أَعْيُنْ Once again, the meme followed by a, a hamza which is not uh, of the letters of what? <laughs> of ikhfa or the letters of <laughs> idgham shafwi. So therefore, letters of idhar. And one last example. As-sam'a As-sam'a So basically, the general rule of meme is that it will be idhar, clear, meme second. Only when the meme is followed by another meme is when you do idgham shafwi and you pronounce a ghunna or if the meme is, has a shadda on it. Likewise, if the meme second is followed by a aba, then you will have ikhfa shafawi. Okay, let me now recite some verses of the Quran and you follow along with me. We'll recite Surah Baqarah, verses 62 and onwards. And this is in page 10 of the Madani Mus'haf. 62, verse number 62, page 10. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين آمنوا والذين هادوا والنصارى والصابئين من آمن بالله واليوم الآخر من آمن بالله واليوم الآخر وعمل صالحا فلهم أجرهم عند ربهم فلهم أجرهم عند ربهم ولا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون. Notice all of the memes here. فلهم أجرهم عند ربهم ولا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون. All of them were what? إظهار. إظهار. Because they are of the letters of إظهار. Okay. Let us now move on to the next verse. وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِيثَاقَكُمْ وَرَفَعْنَا فَوْقَكُمُ الطُّورَ خُذُوا مَا آتَيْنَاكُمْ بِقُوَّةٍ خُذُوا مَا آتَيْنَاكُمْ بِقُوَّةٍ وَاذْكُرُوا مَا فِيهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Here, آتَيْنَاكُمْ What did I do here? إِخْفَاءَ شَفْوِي Because we have a meme followed by a aba. So we have, uh, we have إِخْفَاءَ شَفْوِي along with a غُنَّة ثُمَّ تَوَلَّيْتُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ فَلَوْلَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ لَكُنْتُمْ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Here we have the thumma, mi mushaddad. Mi mushaddad always has a? Ghunna. Always. Thumma tawallaytum mim. Aha, we have mim second followed by a? Mim. So we have idram. Notice here, mim ba'di thalik. A noon second followed by a? Ba. So we have? Iqlab. Iqlab. فلولا فضل الله عليكم عليكم here would be إظهار ورحمته لكنتم once again إدغام شفوي إدغام 
لَكُنْتُمْ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Okay, so this is the rules of the meme, very easy. Uh, it's much easier than the Nun Sakina. We said that there is, uh, firstly, there would be an idgham when a uh, shafwi, when meme is followed by another meme. Then there will be ikhfa shafwi, when meme is followed by aba. And all of the other letters will be idgha, which means no special rule applies. We hope to see you next time. Until then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.